Welcome, my fiery Aries. Um, this is your November 2024 tarot reading. Um, please excuse all the bandages on my hand. I got excited during a um, football game yesterday and ended up hitting my hand. But anyway, um, this reading will be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Um, as many of you know, I do read through my spirit guides. And um, the heck is on me. Sorry. I'm like distracted. Um, anyways, I read through my spirit guides who I know connect to your spirit guides. So that's why a lot of times one reading can resonate with so many different people. I feel like we're just one big soul family anyway. Um, and that's another thing about the timing of a reading. I feel like a reading will find you. You'll find it exactly when you need to. Um, or let's say you watch a reading. You're like, hmm, some of it makes sense. But I don't know about, you know, certain parts of it. And then things start to happen in your life revisit the reading because you'll probably hear the messages in a different way um you know i feel like sometimes we use our human ears to listen and other times we come back and we use our spiritual ears so you know whatever fits um you could certainly be in love with an aries whether platonically or romantically same thing just know your guides are here so you'll receive messages. I want to give a shout out to my friend on uh, March 22nd. Um, that's a real, it's, that's the only Aries I think is really connected um, that I can think of. Um, I do a lot of Aries personal readings. Um, and I just always love doing your readings. Anyways, so this is really um asking you to use your intuition that's the main thing so just going to take a moment <sighs> breathe let go of expectations i put no expectations upon a reading um i don't even plan how many cards are going to come out whatever wants to come out i say let come out which can make a reading long um but i feel like they're just exactly what they're meant to be so you know, not everyone's going to have the patience for a long reading. I get it. Um, but I would, you know, what I would do is I would check out like the last 15 minutes because I really feel like that's where all of our clarity and our, well, we're guided through the whole reading, but um, I just feel like the end of a reading is really so important. So let me stop talking and get into the reading. We are going to use a few different decks here. We're going to use Mother Mary, of course, for her beautiful words of wisdom. But we are going to do this at the end of the reading. Um, we are going to use the Guild of Tarot to clarify or go deeper. And deep we do go. We are going to use the Romance Angels if love comes up. Um, and I have to say now you are the... Um, well, I only have you and your opposite, which, by the way, is what I'm doing. I'm doing opposite readings. So your opposite would be Libra. Um, and I'm doing this, well, first of all, I was intuitively guided to do it back in September. But now I get it. I feel like, you know, our opposite can definitely help fulfill us. If nothing else, teach us, like, you know, maybe some of the things that we're lacking that they have and they can learn from you for sure so anyways um we will bring in the romance angels if love comes into the reading we are going to also bring back the major arcanas um i use these as like bullet points for your reading this is what we're going to begin with i shoot for like three to four cards but you know whatever comes out is what comes out sometimes it's his own little message um but they always tie back into the main spread i just love bringing these into a reading um i don't do it that often but i've been but i have been doing it more often so we will use again the major arcanas 
And then for your main spread areas, I'm going to use the light sears. And I'll be using, I haven't done Libra's reading yet. I'll do Libra right after you. Um, I will use the same decks also. So each opposite signs have been, they've been each, they each ha have been, uh, why can't I talk? They each have had their own decks, if that makes sense. <laughs> So, I haven't used the light seas for any other signs. Let's put it that way. Just for you and then for Libra. All right, let's go ahead and get into the major arcanas. I'm going to go ahead and give them a shuffle or two. I always pre shuffle everything, um, but I do like to shuffle with you here. Because I do feel like you're all just sitting in the room with me. I really do. Alright, let's go ahead and bring the lid down. There we go. Makes the room. Now let's begin. Okay. We have the moon. This is your neighbor. Your neighbor to, um, I want to say the north. But this is a card. Of, this is uh, Pisces Major Arcana, Cancer's Ruler. This can talk about uncertainties. This being your very first card, but can also talk about very dreamy energy. And then we have the Magician looking right back at the Moon. Interesting. Like, what is the Magician trying to manifest from the Moon's energy? Hmm, well, not a tower, that's for sure. Okay, so we got more than three, but we're going to take them, especially with the tower now showing. We have the Hermit, card of Virgo. You know, it's like the Hermit is emerging from this tower. Um, and this is why I don't write, you know, I'll give you the signs, but then what I'm really doing is reading the energy, um, because this definitely looks like someone has been through some type of a tower moment, uh, but probably learned a lot from it as the hermit, you know, the hermit, I feel sometimes it's like when we are brought down to our knees, but in this energy, I really am seeking the light. This is when I'm asking those big spiritual questions. But I feel like you're also finding the answers within the hermit's energy. And, you know, it's part of healing um, the human being, but also the spiritual, the soul. Uh, and it's also part of the wisdom that you gain. Like the hermit gains true wisdom from the tower. You know, again, it could have brought me to my knees, but... I'm not going to stay on my knees. You know what I mean? Like very quickly. Mm, I shouldn't say very quickly because it is a nine. So it could have taken some time to really reflect upon it. But I feel like the tower here is a lesson um, that hopefully is leading towards a blessing. Well, we have judgment. So, you know, whatever the tower was, it's like time to let that go. Because this is calling you to the, this is your spiritual team. And they're calling you to the present moment. It means there's about to be some type of rebirth in your life. You know, often I feel like it's up to us whether we say yay or nay. But sometimes it may be predestined. It may just be, you know, like this tower was going to happen no matter what. And then we have justice. So there's your opposite, Libra. Now, you know, I feel like a couple different things when justice shows up in a reading. First of all, justice's job is really to make you whole again. So it does feel like, again, that tower broke you in some way. Um, but boy, at the same time, I feel that you're stronger than you've ever been. You know, you may still be recovering, so to speak, but I still feel like at least on a spiritual level, level, 
You're stronger than you ever been. So, justice is here to make you whole again. It can certainly talk about ties that need to be cut. You know, in a way, this can talk about karma. You know, like a karmic relationship or a karmic experience. And that's probably a little bit what the tower was. And that makes sense with the hermit, like emerging from that energy. Wiser. Stronger. And healed. Let's make sure we say that. Healed. Now, again, I may still be on a healing process, but I'm in that process. Judgment is like, there's no sense of continuing to look at this tower any longer. That time has come and gone. This is about something new that's opening up. You have a lot of power over it through the magician's energy. Um, and this could certainly talk about like the cutting of ties to someone or a situation. You know, whatever you use the sword of justice for, I feel that you feel that it was time, right? That it needed, that energy needed to be cut out. I'll slide these over just a little bit more. Give myself lots of room. All right, let's go ahead and bring in the light seers. Um, you know, I also just, I don't know, I feel like I also want to add in the Hermits of Nine, and we run in nine year cycles. So this could certainly talk about like a last cycle that you've been through. Um, but it is nines are also about reflection, but final reflection. You know, it's not an energy that I want to get lost in for too long, you know, reflect upon it, learn from it, grow from it, and then keep on moving. I like that your opposite sign showed up. It tells me you're probably going to show up in their reading. All right. So let's go ahead and begin with the light seers. Okay, we had a card flip around. All right. So we have the five of wands. Hmm. So five, change. But because the tower is here, I feel like this is a change that, I, that I'm welcoming. Um, this is an energy of a lot of drama, a lot of fighting, a lot of ego, all of the above. You know, often feeling this energy, because it is a five and it is asking us to consider change, Sometimes the only change I can really do here is to separate myself from this energy. It's like being careful not to get caught, get caught up in other people's drama, other people's fights, you know, other people's words. Like, don't take them on if you can help it. Let it roll off your back, Aries. If you can, let it roll off your back. We have the Queen of Pentacles, who I call my little psychic detective. She's right under the magician. You know, she is looking at the Five of Wands, but her eyes are closed. So she may be remembering a period of time. Um, and there may have been like this need again for you to either separate yourself from that energy or let's say, let's say it's like family and I can't just separate myself. Then this may say, you know, try to find times 
and places where you can go into, you know, like meditation, even in the midst of chaos, like quieting my own mind. I feel like it would do you so well. Um, and the magician right above the queen. I do feel like you are the queen, by the way. Um, though, you know, you trust your own intuition. Because I know for some, this queen could be someone who maybe did cause some drama in your life. But here, it feels like she's kind of rising above it. You know, it's like she's dreaming about the life I could create. She's got this big pentacle in her hand. It's almost like she, maybe financially she can do it. Maybe she's trying to um, manifest some finances so she can make a change. This is someone who, um, you know, I'm just looking at, at her and her hat and these tree branches coming out of her hat. And to me, it's just a symbol of wisdom. You know, probably been here before, lived, lived, you know, in a different lifetime before the wisdom of my past lives and my present life. Now we have justice right under the tower. So we know now that it's important that we understand what energy needs to be cut out, you know. When you do cut certain energy out, what you're going to find is balance. And when you have balance, then you feel so much better in your life. When you're living an unbalanced life, especially if it's due to other people, that's difficult, right? It's almost like you don't have a say-so in your own life, but, but you do. But you do. Um double Libra on the board. We have the two of pentacles. So that puts the ball in your court. You know, I feel like the tower has already happened for sure. We have the Seven of Wands. This is about standing your ground. But just look at her, though. Look how she's rising above. She's in, like, her own little bubble. So I feel like this is someone who definitely rose above the drama. You know, stand your ground, but to what point? You know what I mean? Because, again, with the Five of Wands, even if I'm standing my ground, which, I mean, I get it. There's times that you do need to stand your ground. But I feel like with the Five of Wands in the same reading, it, it I don't know if it serves me. I don't know if I get any results by standing my ground. I feel like the best thing to do is just cut out the drama. Cut out the people who are drama filled, you know, the people who say it's my way or the highway. I would choose the highway at this point. You know, again, you have judgment looking right at the hermit. So judgment's calling you to the present moment. And again, it's about a rebirth. So the two pentacles, that ball is in your court. So you do have a chance. I mean, you do have an option here. And maybe the option is, do I cut ties or do I not cut ties? Do I keep trying or do I just stop, you know, and get moving on with my life? Two pentacles to me, they call it the juggler's card. But I really feel like it's using your logical mind, the wisdom that you gain, especially coming under the hermit. You know, your spiritual self, your spiritual team is right there. We have, interesting, the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles. But the King of Pentacles is coming under justice. And he's also mirroring the Five of Wands. So, 
I don't know. I don't know that I can give this king a whole lot of credit right now. Kind of feels like it's this queen who's making the decision of whether to cut these ties. And it does feel like, you know, once and for all type of energy. Um, normally, I read the King of Pentacles in a very good light. But because of the energies coming around, it kind of takes the light away. We have the Magician again. Now it's under the Five of Wands. You know, Aries, I feel like you're making some real decisions about your life right now. And, you know, I feel like you're looking at different avenues, different directions you could go. Taking, like, everything you've learned and moving in a different direction. You know, the person in the Seven of Wands where they're standing their ground... She has her back to this king. So I feel like this is you putting your back towards this king. So I feel like this king is what is leaving. Now, I'm saying the king, you know, can be a queen. But it is interesting how even the queen and the king had their backs to each other. You know, the one thing I want to say is just be careful for those who say they want another chance. Because this king may say that. Like, give me another chance. But here's the thing. Ask yourself, like, how many times have I given this person a chance? And what qualifies, you know, a new chance? Like, you know, like, what have you, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? We have the Seven of Cups. And then we have the Four of Wands, or the Four of Swords. This is healing. And it's mirroring the Tower. You know, what I always notice is persons it looks like they're nesting. It's like their heart is outside of their body. Like I'm allowing this my heart to heal, but I'm resting in the meantime. You know, resting can help rejuvenate you. I do feel like this is you. Um, it it kind of makes me feel like the tower is... Well, I already felt the tower has already happened. But I feel like you using the sword of justice, um, I feel like that has probably already happened. Because now we have you more in a healing period. But as you're healing, I feel like... Maybe you're receiving like epiphanies and ideas of something new, something, you know, something new that you can create. Uh, you have the magician twice. That's pretty powerful energy. The magician reminds you that you have all the tools that you need to really be successful on whatever path you choose. You know, and maybe your spiritual team is showing you a couple different directions you could go. Seven of Cups could definitely signify that. What do I do? What do I do? Dang it. All right. So, you know, this just tells me if you've been going through a difficult period that that you will overcome. Um, and it may take time. You know, again, the Four Swords, it is it is about rest and rejuvenation. But it's so that you can heal. And I just feel like as you're in that, wow, as you're in that state, 
there's like um, epiphanies and ideas and visions coming to you. I don't know why I can't pick up a card. Now we have the lovers. Card of Gemini. So this is a head over heart decision. And I could definitely see that playing out here because it's coming right under the two pentacles. Do I fall on my head? Do I fall on my heart? First of all, I feel like if this is the king of pentacles, like asking for another chance, but yet there was this tower and justice and then drama. Of course, it's up to you. Um, but I, it, it feels to me like there's nothing left. I don't know. Like, I feel I feel like empty promises. And although we have the lovers here, I don't really feel that this is talking about like a certain connection between this king and this queen. You know, it kind of feels like either they were a karmic relationship and that means, you know, well, let's talk about what karma is. So, you know, anything that you do to another, good and bad, um, will come back to you and vice versa. So... Some of you in a previous lifetime, there may, you know, you may have been someone who, um, let's just say hurt another. And now it was your time in this lifetime just to learn that lesson. Now someone hurt you. Ah, uh, okay. But if it is karmic and you do learn the lessons from that and you do clear that energy well, then you clear that for eternity. So, you know, once it's cleared, it's cleared. We have the sun, card of Leo. It's a ruler of Leo. And then we have the tower right under the king. So I, you know, what what can I say about this king? That the cards aren't already saying, right? So this king now is directly attached to the tower and directly attached to justice and mirroring the one who's causing the drama, the fighting, my way or the highway type of energy. Um but here's the thing the sun is here for you and i love that the sun is mirroring judgment that means to me that whatever signs your spiritual team is sending you to help you begin a new journey it's going to be very clear because when the sun comes into a reading it's your illuminator it means you don't have to go searching right i mean you do have the moon the magician looking at the moon like Maybe there's a little uncertainty in manifesting something. Um, and listen, some of you may have even considered like, ah, do I take this person back? But I feel like very quickly you realize what's going to change. I mean, is anything going to change? You know, anything is done in the dark will come to the light when the sun is here. So that might help ease your mind a little bit. I get this feeling that in this four swords where our heart is outside of her body kind of feels like it might be connected to the lovers. And although I do feel like this is about a head over heart decision, but I feel like that's relating to this king. I feel like there's someone else also on your path. And that's what your spiritual team is getting you ready for. You know, and it makes sense that I would have to cut ties, right? So that I'm free and clear. The sun just means that, you know, it's like a beautiful brand new day. The sun is out. Um, I feel like you're coming out of that nesting time. 
like that healing period. And again, doesn't mean I'm completely healed, but I'm healed enough. I'm healed enough. So I feel like we got to say no to this king. That is your choice, though. That is your choice. But as I'm looking at it, I would say no to this king because I feel like this king has caused a lot of strife in my life. And why do I want to allow that to happen again? Because the tower is coming right under him. So I feel like if, and maybe that's why the magician's looking at the moon, like, is this what I really want? You know, is like, this may be one of the things that judgment is pointing out to you. And that may be why I felt like judgment is pointing out more than one thing to you. You know, it's almost like your spiritual team is saying, Aries, you're so much wiser than you used to be. You know, don't go back if someone hasn't evolved like you have. Don't go backwards. And, you know, I get I get people coming back um, from our past all the time in readings. But here, I don't feel like it's a good thing. Not with this person, anyway. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Okay, well, I think there's our answer. The Eight of Cups. This is you. First of all, it's an eight, so it does stand for a new beginning. Um, This is someone who has taken that, <coughs> excuse me, taken that time to, like, really look within their emotional house, find clarity. You know, it's almost like maybe this king had like a hold on your heart, but I don't feel like anymore. Somehow you were able to cut, again, cut those ties. This person is moving to the Nine of Cups, which is about inner harmony. And, you know, I know a lot of you have been like, you know, working on yourselves. And when I say working on yourselves, it's just, it's more about being really truthful with oneself, right? Like if I want a certain type of life, then I need to understand that I myself, it, it depends where my own vibration is at. And when I'm caught up in this drama, does it not just feel like more bad things just keep happening? But when I rise above it, well, look what happens. The sun comes out. So... Look at underneath that, the Eight of Swords. So I feel like you were tied up in knots for a little while. Uncertain. You know, it's like this king had you. But I don't feel like he has you anymore. You know, this is a self-created prison. But I feel like when it's uncreated, which can only be uncreated by the one who created it, it's freedom. It really is. It's freedom. It's freedom from my thoughts. You know, there's negative thoughts that play over and over in my head. It's freedom from the walls. You know, I'm not going to stop loving. And even potentially fall back in love with someone. Not this king. You know, I'm not going to say this king can evolve. But everything around him is saying no. And... This makes me feel like, the Eight of Swords makes me feel like you've given someone a lot of time. But now the Eight of Cups, I feel like, but I'm done. I'm done. All right, let's bring in the Guild of Tarot. And let's go deeper. We'll start at the beginning. But we are going to read it as a whole. So, people on the board so far. Pisces, Cancer, Virgo, Libra, Libra. Um, King and Queen of Pentacles can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, Leo, Gemini. Another Cancer energy. You got all kinds of people on the board. All right. Let's start at the beginning.
We have the Knight of Swords. Hmm. This could talk about some type of communication that's coming in. We have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is really learning that fine art of give and take. Um, it's a very compassionate, empathetic type of energy. And it really is where I, you know, I feel best when I'm helping others. Um, it makes me feel good to help others feel good. But I also have to learn in that energy um, because it really is learning that fine art of give and take. You know, am, do I constantly give, but am not receiving? And if that's the case, how long do I want to stay in that energy? Six of balance is, or six of pentacles is about finding balance within the give and take of life. Um, but it is very empathetic energy and compassionate energy. And then we have you. So we have you right over, well, your opposite, justice, but also connected to this tower. Hmm. Hello, soulmates. Interesting. Interesting, because is this soulmate this king? I don't think so. I just don't think so. I think this is someone else. And that may be who you're hearing communication from. You know, the two of cups is a soulmate. And I kind of love that it's coming, um, un you know, under the hermit. But also over that two of pentacles. So, again, the ball's put in your court. You might, like, out of the blue, receive communication from someone. We have the Ten of Wands. We have the Queen of Wands. Hello, fool. So, this is a new beginning. And taking a leap of faith. You know, I love that what's mirroring the fool is the magician. And I'm sure you hear me talking about this all the time. But, you know, in Tarot... The Fool is the very first um, heart, and it is about allowing oneself to have a new beginning. You know, we just have to realize, especially with the Hermit here, it, it often reminds me that we do, our life does run in chapters, and, you know, there's times when chapters are just meant to end. Um, I feel like it's our humanness that tends to pull it back in again. So the fool being mirrored by its greatest mentor and the magician teaches the fool that you really do possess everything you need to be successful on this next journey. You just want to take a leap of faith. Over the seven of cups, this is where you are trying to make a decision, but it's an emotional decision. Um, but let's go back up here for a second. So, you know, I feel like here's you, again, the emperor. It's connecting you directly, not only to the tower, but also to justice. So I feel like it's you who used that sword. I feel like that, because the, the soulmates is connected to the hermit, um, but also, again, putting the ball in your court, and then the lovers right below that. It definitely feels like someone new. Though you are soul connected, that means that means that you're going to feel familiar with this energy, with this person. Um, and then we move into the Ten of Wands. It's almost like your spiritual team is just trying to get you to see that someone of your past is not meant to be your future. 
um, because I feel like around and around we'll go and we'll just keep ending up back in a tower. So, you know, but I feel like you know this. Ten of Wands is the energy of energy that just feels like it's too much. And by the way, in the Ten of Wands energy, if this is talking about like an old relationship, this could say that you have the tendency to put like, or at least in this relationship, um, the responsibility to keep this 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 love alive or this relationship alive seems like it all landed on your shoulders. And I feel like that ties back to the Six of Cups, where maybe I was a giver and someone else was just taking. But how long do I want that? And then we have the Queen of Pentacles. So you're the Queen of Wands here, first of all. Um, probably you. But this is my Queen of Action. This is my Queen that moves according to her desires. Like she really doesn't let anything or anyone come in between what it is I want to manifest. Now, it may be it's taken some time to like really reach that status. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Queen of Pentacles right here also. And I do feel like more of you are the Queen of Pentacles, male or female. You know, I also feel like some of you are on this new adventure. You know, that may be why, again, I feel judgment is ushering in more than one thing. For some of you, there may be this opportunity to um, create. You know, when I see the emperor, a lot of times I think of like a business owner, um, leader of the people for sure. Doesn't mean I have to do it as a, for a living uh, but it's just your natural energy, like where you you naturally just want to help. And you like helping the underdog. And maybe this king over here was the underdog. But I don't feel like there was any growth. So then I had to just learn, okay, well, I can't give my energy to everyone. But I feel like not only do I feel like there's a soulmate that's coming in, I also feel like there's an opportunity to, um, you know, Aries, I feel like you're just becoming more psychic or more open to your psychic abilities. And there may be op an opportunity that lies within that. But let's keep going. Hello, Ace of Cups, right under the soulmates, right over the lovers. You know, in a lot of the cards, what it says is love begins. How beautiful, though, that it's attached to the soulmates. I also love it being attached or mirroring the hermit. Because this can talk about past lies. You know, and again, a soulmate energy, there's a familiarity with this person. It's like, you know, what's that saying? The eyes, what's that saying? The eyes are the window to our soul. I believe that. I also like that both these soulmates are like on the same level. And to me, that means like vibrational. You know, and then the Ace of Cups coming over the lovers. Yes, I might be making a decision. But here's the thing. I also feel the lovers talks about chemistry. And because the Ace of Cups is over, it, I feel like it'd be a little undeniable. But let's see what else we have. We have the Nine of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Wands again. We have the Eight of Cups. And then look at this. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Okay. So, long story short. I do feel like there's one person who you've been with. 
who you've given time to, who does feel like there's a lot of drama attached to them, and they probably are the instigator of that. Um, again, someone where, you know, kind of like my way or the highway. And with two eight of cups, I feel like, well, you chose the highway. Um, but here's but here's the thing. I feel like, so let's say then you're moving on from that. Just like I said, where I felt like judgment is bringing two things in for you. One of them, I feel, is, you know, you're doing something with your money. You're doing something within your creative house um, that really has an opportunity to land you in success, real success. You have the nine of pentacles here, which talks about um, successful self-employment. It doesn't have to be self-employment, though. But this is really about, you know, reaping the the benefits of your hard work. You know, um, can I be successful on this new adventure? All it's saying is, as long as you're willing to put the work in, then you will have success. But I also filmed the Nine of Pentacles, though. Yes, it may take my hard work. This is something that doesn't feel like work. You know, I do have to dedicate myself to, but in the same time, and I love that the Ace of Cups is right there. So that makes me feel like I'm going to love, like, I love what I do. And the sun underneath it, very clear about what you're doing. And I love how the Nine of Pentacles, which to me also speaks about independence. This is the energy where I really feel like I can stand on my own two feet. And when you feel that way, and I feel like and for all of us, when we feel like I, like I can take care of myself, then we're much more choosier about who we allow in our life. Especially if you're starting to see real abundance in your life. You know, you are the sole benefactor of your hard work here. But again, it's it's really an independent nature. But it doesn't mean you're closed down, especially with the sun right underneath it. It's like a brand new day. Again, the warmth of the sun. And then that nine of pentacles turns into the ten of pentacles. Hello. Ten of pentacles. The lovers. The ace of cups. The two of cups. The hermit. And then you ultimately making that decision. Well, what a decision you got to make. You know, it doesn't feel as hard as, as I'm making it out to be. Um, but it does feel like, you know, potentially two people are coming back into your life. One, you have known before. Um, and I mean that like as in, in, as in eternity. You know, your soul connected. Another. I feel like you've already given it a chance to, more than one chance probably. Uh, and I don't feel like there's any change with them. You know, it, it feels like that type of person where I'd rather keep you than lose you, even though I'm not going to change my ways, if that makes sense. I mean, it makes sense in my brain, but the full... Are you going to allow this new beginning? The Eight of Cups right underneath that tells me yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. And I also love that the Eight of Cups signifies that you are moving to the Nine of Cups. You're moving away from the emotional turmoil. So you're moving more into inner harmony. So inner harmony with an independent nature, well, that's just a winning combination. And it may take a special person to be able to measure up to that at the same time. But listen, it's like, don't dim your light, right? Don't lower your vibration. If someone wants to be with you, they will raise their vibration. I feel like this king is going to try to come back again, but I feel very quickly you're going to shut him down. I just do. Him or her, by the way. I just feel like you're going to shut him down.
All right. I want to look at, um, I want to look at judgment, but we have the strength card. Hmm. You know, it's almost like your spiritual team is saying, you've overcome a lot. Be proud of yourself. You know, I this is like a spirit warrior. I did have to look within myself. I had to figure these things out for myself. But I did. And really, this turns into courage. And it's like your spiritual team is recognizing the courage within you. Do you recognize that? Also in eight, though. King of Swords. It's like we're changing kings here. Um, this can represent Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We have Gemini and we have Libra on the board. Um, but, you know, I, I really don't feel like... I mean, it can be an air sign. But I feel like the King of Swords to me represents... Um, first of all, we do have the Knight of Swords. So this could be someone who's coming in communicating with you. Um, I feel like the King of Swords is someone who has integrity. It's important that whoever they're with be truthful and honest. Therefore, they must be the same. Okay, I'm going to pick those up though. And before we, I am going to bring out the Romance Angels. Um, but before we do that, I want to come up to this Knight of Swords. Hello, world. So, this is the next chapter. No wonder Judgment's looking right at the Hermit. It's, it's like final recognition, final reflection. It's done. It's time to move on. I love the world's energy because it's a very spiritual time. It makes sense that this would be a time that you would meet a soulmate. You know, sometimes we don't meet. Um, and by the way, we can we have a lot of different soulmates. And some soulmates are here to teach us some difficult lessons. But some are just here to love us. Right? Because this Ace of Cups right under the soulmates. This is about love. I feel like the lessons have been learned. So, the next chapter. But I feel like in the world, this is the very last card in the Tarot, by the way. So I often call it the closest to God. You know, I feel like whatever happens in the world chapter, chances are, it is for the rest of my life. But it feels like it may start as communication. And it even makes sense that the moon would be there because, you know... I could see being a little uncertain. Like, should I take a step forward? You know, look at everything I've just overcome. But it's in the same breath, I, I, I want to say, you know, try not to shut down your heart. Or maybe you have for a little while. So maybe really what I really want to say is try to understand that not all people are the same. And sometimes when we ourselves, like I think of different relationships I've been in. And if I just think about where my own vibration was at, at that time, low, well, that's what I attracted, lower vibrational energy. You know, it's interesting because as I myself evolved, so did my relationships. Um, and sometimes we don't meet someone until there are certain soul lessons, especially if this, if that we were dealing with any karmic issues. You know, a soulmate would not come in and, and try to interrupt your karmic lesson because they know that by doing that, then you're going to have to repeat it. So a soulmate will wait. 
you know, a soulmate will be guided. And that's exactly what judgment is doing. Like, I don't want you to interrupt their karmic lesson. Let's let them pay it off so it's paid off for eternity. And, you know, if we can even look at this, because I really do feel it's karmic, if we can look at this in that way, then it's easier to let go at the same time. I have a feeling it was a difficult lesson. No doubt. Um, but this is, you know, it's time to turn the page. That's what it feels like. Time to turn the page. Okay. I feel like I, I feel like I have the understanding I need. But let's bring out the romance angels. Because we do have love on the board. Give him a cut. Love is in the air. Every time I turn around. Love yourself first. Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Love yourself first. I don't even know what I was looking at. So I feel like I got to put that right over you. But now let's look at the soulmates with the Ace of Cups and the lovers under there. Hello, wedding. <laughs> this situation involves marriage. Wow. Why not? Right? Why not? Again, there's true soul recognition. That doesn't mean I know who you are the minute you enter my life. But there is just this different feeling with you. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel. I feel, number one, I can be me. Like, I don't have to change anything about myself. Especially because... For many of you, you have completed this karmic lesson. And because you have had a lot of spiritual growth, it doesn't mean you're perfect, but nobody's perfect. Wedding. Well, that's probably why the Ten of Pentacles is here. You know, going from singular energy into coupled energy. Okay, uh, I'm not going to fight with it. Look at this very soon. Clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Well, you have two magicians here. It's a lot of power. Now, you may be mirroring someone else or someone else may be mirroring your energy. You're mirroring each other's energy is what I'm trying to say. And I'm saying that because you do have a lot of synchronicities here. Um, and I do find, you know, especially through like personal readings that um, soulmates do have a lot of mirroring events in their lives. Doesn't mean like, you know, let's say both of us were married before, which probably is the case. Like we both got married at the same time. We both got divorced at the same time. One could have got married at a certain date while another was getting divorced. It just means like major pinnacles or pinnacles probably happened in both your lives around the same time. Maybe you both had to deal with the, certain, the same type of energy. Past life relationship. Kind of already knew that. You have known each other before. So, what beautiful energy is coming out with this Two of Cups, the soulmate, the Ace of Cups, unconditional love. You know, past life relationship, that means that when I say unconditional love, I really mean that. A true connection, a true commitment to each other, whether it goes to a wedding or not. You know, not everybody wants to be married. But that doesn't mean I don't want a commitment, right? And the ability to manifest. 
truly a better life for yourself, no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be love, but love is on the table. Love is in the air. Did I just already sing that? All right, let's just do one more round. I'm kind of looking at the full also. It is safe for you to love. So looking at the full brand new beginning, right? A leap of faith. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. That makes sense with the six of pentacles right above it. Because that is about learning that fine art of give and take. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. Separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. Well, I feel like it's already happened. It's already happened. But, again, you know, I, I get this feeling that this person of the, of the past, let's just say, or recent past, you know, it makes me feel like this is the type of person that, I don't know, like, I feel like they, they don't really know how to love. And even if I can't give you everything that they probably know you deserve, it's almost like, but yet I don't want to see someone else give it to you. So I kind of keep you on the hook. But I don't feel like you are putting up with that anymore. I just don't. I feel like you use that sword. You cut those ties. And even though they may also make a repeat appearance. I feel like you. Because especially where it's telling you it's safe for you to love. But it's talking about how high your energy is now. So evolution right you have evolved from it's like you say to this person listen i'm not the same person i used to be you know you can't pull the wool over my eyes anymore i'm not willing to fight with you even if this is someone that i cannot like literally get out of my life i am still not gonna i'm not gonna feed your ego i'm not gonna do it not gonna happen and as you yourself, again, are healing, I feel like your spiritual team is really getting you ready. You know, that's why you don't want to close your heart. I mean, you know, definitely take time. Take time. Allow the healing process to take place, which I feel like has to happen after every relationship. You know, anything difficult we've gone through. I feel like it's okay to take that moment and, you know, allow ourselves to heal. But I also feel like there's this energy here where it's saying, but don't get lost in that energy either. Understand there's still a lot of life waiting for you. There's still love waiting for you. There's opportunity waiting for you. And it's literally showing you in this abundant energy. And maybe you couldn't reach that true abundance um, or really enjoy it because of somebody else's energy. You know, just take their power away and reclaim your own. And I feel like the rest, I, I just feel like will happen. You know, I don't feel like we need to plan love. But if we think about our own vibration, like... Where am I at? You know, um, am I able to give the type of love that I also would like to receive? That is the law of attraction. You know what I mean? If I want a high vibrational love, then I got to be able to give it also. I feel like that's where the Six of Pentacles is coming in. Again, figuring out that fine art of give and take. And just because one didn't, couldn't give you what you deserve it doesn't mean that another can't please please believe that 
And I do feel like sometimes what, because we have the world and we have wedding, it does feel like the soulmates are meant to be together forever now. Try not to let anybody else come in between that. So I feel like it would be very hard. It'd be very hard, you know, like once this love opens up and starts to blossom and let's say this king comes back in, tries to communicate with you, you know, give me another chance. I feel like very quickly you would say no way, you know, and you may even utter the words, I am not that same person that you once knew. I have grown. I have evolved. I expect more. And I want to do more in my life. And you're just not part of it anymore. But you already knew that. Now go away. You know, your spiritual team is saying, all we're doing is calling you to the present moment. And then we will send you signs to help guide you. And every step along the way, it will be your choice. And that's why you want to look at this again as like, think of that four of swords, healing, right? Resting, rejuvenation. Knowing that it's safe for you to love again. You know, and... If you worry, take it slow. I feel like for the soulmates, even if I said no to this person, I don't feel like they would just go away. I don't. I don't feel like they would just go away and that would be the last I'd see of them. I feel like they would um, try to persuade you, but in a very loving way. And I feel like what you'll realize pretty quickly is you have so much more in common. You know, you're, you are, what's that saying? Like two peas in a pod. But you just got to allow yourself to get there. You know, and I feel like this reading is trying to give you confirmation that this really does have an opportunity to last for the rest of your life. And listen, especially with past lives here, right? You've known each other before. Again, I feel like, especially with the soulmates so close to judgment, like the soulmate would, what's the word? I like in, intuitively know that I don't want to come between my love's karmic lesson. And put myself before it. I want to give them the opportunity to be able to pay it off for eternity. And listen, maybe they've gone through again. They've also gone through that. And you wouldn't want to interrupt their opportunity to pay off their karma for good. You know, we do have two eights of cups. We do have two justices here. Um, two magicians. And there may be others, two towers. But that was then. I feel like it all starts with you loving yourself first. And then when you're able to do that, the rest will just come in. Like, allow yourself to be surprised. Allow yourself to believe in the unexpected. You know, many people are like, why does everybody else have a soulmate except for me? I feel like sometimes we don't meet the love of our lives until a little later in life. Why? Because I feel like our souls, 
you know, of course we want to know about love in this lifetime, but there's other things our souls also wanted to accomplish. And that's what you're doing. All right, let's take Mother Mary over. You know, a difficult reading, yes, but beautiful, yes. Mother Mary, Mother Mary. And you never know when love is going to happen. I'm telling you. I know that from my own experiences. Um, and I feel like you know that also. Why can't I pick this up? Sobriety. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. Let me just say, you know, this is definitely one way of going about, going about like, you know, the hardship, sadness. I could be trying to drink it away. Well, that won't work because you'll just wake up the next day with more problems, but it, with the hangover on top of it. Um, but I also feel because judgments here saying that we will send you the signs that it is your clear mind that's going to be able to pick up on them. But I get it because I do feel like you've dealt with some difficult things, people. Um, so I get like where I may try to have a drink here and there. You know, I think it's just not allowing it to become a problem. We have mercy. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. Let's try one more. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. And it's interesting because right underneath that is love yourself first. All right, Mother Mary, anything else for my beautiful Aries? Okay, well, a couple things. Patience. This is temperance. Well, I mean, I read it as temperance. Patience. I trust in divine timing. Well, your spiritual team is on the board. Divine timing. Hope. It's like the star. I trust that God has a wonderful solution and brilliant plans in store for me. That would be the case. And by the way, let's read the last line. Brilliant plans in store for me, which means they haven't happened yet. Hope. Divine timing. Optimism. Optimism. I expect good things to happen, and they do. You know, optimism reminds me of like the three of wands, and this is where someone's really living in the present moment, just as judgment is asking you to do. And this is someone who's saying, you know, I'm going to find joy in my everyday moments, in my everyday life, <clears throat> but I'm also going to keep optimism alive as it relates to you know, a great love finding me, great opportunity finding me. Um, it's saying to divine that you know your ships will come in and they'll come in divine timing. I expect good things to happen and they do. And they do. And they will. Amen. And Aries, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, interesting reading. Can't wait to hear your comments. And again, I feel like there's two people. Well, there's you and a soulmate, but I feel like there's also someone else. But I feel like this someone else is someone you've probably given plenty of time to. 
plenty of energy to. And, you know, some people just don't like to see people happy. So be it. You know, go live your miserable life. I, I've turned a page. And by turning the page, it's like the fool, right? And the fool willing to take these leaps of faith, trusting in divine. I expect good things to happen. And they do. I love you guys. Thank you. Sorry for my uh, hand. Um, I was I was wasn't gonna do your reading because of that, and I thought, well, that's ridiculous. You guys won't care. Um, but anyways, I love you. I thank you. Um, please let me know how this fits with you. Um, or if you're someone who has overcome like these past towers and are now on the other side, I love it when you share because I feel like you can help. You help heal others through your own words. And I know that. Um, and sometimes people will reply to your statement or your comment. And I love that too. Like I love the back and forth. So I, you know, beside where you've been, I love where you're going. Let's just leave it that way. I love you. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.